Hi guys, welcome to Getting Real with Real Food Recovery. This is our weekly wisdom chat with the Real Food Recovery leaders. And today we're going to talk about people that want to put off uh, till the beginning of the year, eating clean and getting clean and, and doing better and taking their making their health a priority. And I want to start off by saying um, it's interesting how we can use the month of December as an excuse to be the holidays. But I'm here to tell you my biggest point is every single day of the year can be something. There's always a, a reason to have a celebration or in air quotes treats that you celebrate with or around. There's always something at work. There's somebody's birthday. There's, you know, somebody got an A on their paper. So that type of mindset, you it will never be January. It there it tomorrow will never come. There is a million reasons that you can give yourself to an excuse to wait for something to be convenient or to work well into your plan. So that's my big point about waiting till January. In other words, you're you're saying to yourself, I'm going to destroy my health as much as possible during this month, and then I will respect myself starting in January. It's It, it just doesn't seem congruent with um, logic. So that is how I look on it when I'm working with people about people that say, I'm just going to wait till January and start then. Jamie, how do you feel about that phrase? Yeah. I'm going to wait till January. Uh, I think it's, it, it does us a huge disservice. It does our health a huge, huge disservice. We know the science is very clear that every forkful we take either brings us closer to our health goals or further away. It is literally that granular. It is every forkful. So every meal is an opportunity for us to get closer to our goals or further away. When we look at the holiday season that now, unfortunately, starts in the end of October and yeah. goes all the way until the beginning of January. Some folks would even say they'd have it go and go until Valentine's day in February. That's insane, but they'll do it. They'll try to do it. Um, I would say there there's what two and a half months, maybe two months, the end of October through, through beginning of January. If you count the actual days that are observed as holidays in, in mm -hmm. most cultures, you're talking about four days. If you bring in other cultures that have longer holiday celebrations, you're maybe talking about max of 10 days. So what are we talking about here? 10 days maximum, and you're giving away two and a half months of your life. You're throwing in the towel or you're allowing yourself to indulge for two and a half months for up to between four and 10 days of, of actual holidays. So for, so for us to say we're just going to start again in January is actually putting us behind the eight ball a full two months, mm -hmm. not to mention all the things that we're doing that are taking us away from our health goals in those two months. So, so it can take up to another 10 months to heal from the damage that we do in this one mm -hmm. two month period. And we wonder why every year we get, a, you know, we all get a little bit further away from our health. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not, yes, we think it could be maybe about weight, but it's really not about weight. It's so much bigger than weight. It's, it's the way that, that our health actually shows up. Shay, what's your experience here? Can I yeah. say something really quickly? Mm -hmm. and, and when you talk about days, uh, uh, do you have to eat all day long or can we exactly. just put a meal? Exactly. I mean, some people think the whole day is just for eating all day long and just plowing through it. Just try and keep it at least to one meal. It doesn't right. need to be a full day. So I interrupted. Go ahead, Shay. Oh, no, I love this. It's such wisdom. I love hanging out with you ladies and just learning these nuggets. <laughs> and just to add to what you've said, I mean, this is something that I really, I love working with folk in because the question really is, if not this what, if not now, when? And often what's coming up, and I want to speak a little bit into this side of it, is often what's coming up is a resistance, isn't there? There's a resistance to doing it. We, we're almost prolonging the inevitable. We're procrastinating, we're prolonging the inevitable. And I wonder often, what is that? What is that why? What are we trying to put off? Because actually we, we're choosing our pain, aren't we, at the end of the day? We're, we're choosing who it is 
that we want to be. Every sort of bite we take, every sort of action we take, every step, we're choosing. We get to choose who it is that we're actually voting for. And I know, and I know you ladies will, will totally agree with this one, that version, that healthiest, most thriving version does exist. They exist. And we can actually close that gap. We can be that person now just by taking that one small next step. But I think being able to dialogue, why is there a resistance? What are the excuses that I'm trying to find right now? Those are all just coming up as almost kind of protective barriers, but they're not going to serve us well at the end of the day. So what is the resistance saying? What is the one small thing? And actually, who do we want to be now and then the next step and then the next step so just some thoughts from my side agree you know that's i i love what you said that um staying in the food protects us from discomfort when actually it really is adding and compounding to the discomfort and the other thing i was all thinking year. all year and if people want to celebrate if it's something to really look at if the celebration, if the food needs to be part of celebrating, if that's what keeps you happy is having the food there, then we need to take a deeper look at what our value system is. What are we doing? The people that we're connecting with, what about putting the emphasis just on that being the celebration and gathering together? And how much are you really getting out of the connections with other people if the food is the main emphasis for you. So those are just some of the thoughts I had. And we also know that the more we give in, the the, the more we are substantiating the cravings, it just makes them stronger. Yeah, it's a, it's a snowball. And, it's a snowball effect. Yeah, it's progressive, right? And the more that we are able to stave off those cravings, they get smaller and less of a chokehold on us. So anyway, these are just a few thoughts we have. And if you have more questions about what we do here at Real Food Recovery, you can find us at realfoodrecovery4u.com. That's the number four in the letter U. So it's realfoodrecovery4u.com. And we are help here to help people that struggle with processed food addiction and food obsession. And we know there is a better way and a better life. And we are here to help you with that. So thanks guys. See you later. And we're wishing you all a wonderful holiday season as we get going. Bye-bye. Healthy holiday season. Wonderful. Yes. Bye-bye. Take care.